Yo, what is up? Infectious here from Infectious Gaming, home of the best rogue content on YouTube, back with another guide for the Assassination Rogue 7. Point three, point five, which is the Argus Raid. If you haven't seen the Subtlety Rogue or the Outlaw Rogue videos, they are on channel now. You can go back and check them yourselves. So, what do we have here in terms of the pros for the Assassination Rogue? Well, it has a strong single target damage, exceptional defensive utility, good AoE cleaving, good at target swapping, and it has decent mobility. And as we know it, with the good always comes the bad. What is the cons for the Assassination Rogue? Well, we've got to look at the variance and damage. Due to the output by Poison Bomb RNG, sometimes it will be really good, sometimes it will be really bad. You will never be low on DPS, but some pulls you will be really high, other ones you'll be mid-pack, and that's just generally the way that it works. Um, it's very cooldown reliant in terms of if you mess your cooldowns up and you don't use them in the right manner, because the cooldowns are so low and have such a high uptime, then yeah, it's a pretty cooldown reliant spec. Now, let's look at gearing stats. We're going to be looking for as much mastery and critical strike as possible. Over agility, over versatility and haste is pretty much a dead start. You really don't want to be getting haste on any pieces of gear unless the item level increase from your agility is insane. So, mastery, critical strike, agility versus haste. One thing to note, versatility has been climbing up the table in the last couple of weeks since the buff to balance blades and mutilate damage. So, it is very important that you simulate your character to find the best optimal stats for you as depending on your personal gear, trinkets and relics, your simulation might be a little bit different and you may need to obtain more of a certain stat which changes your priority. So, simulate your character for your own personal results. Enchants, the crispy shiny stuff that makes your gear that little bit better. We're going to be looking at running Mark of the Trained Soldier on the neck. We're going to be running with the Agility Cloak and we're going to be gemming Mastery. If you simulate your character and it tells you that you need more of one stat that isn't Mastery, then you will change these Mastery gems to that other stat, be it Versatility or Critical Strike. But Cookie cutter is you're going to be going for as much mastery when you start out, so mastery gem is the way to go here. Now, one thing to note, because mastery is actually so powerful compared to agility, you don't want to be running any of the plus 200 agility gems. People can say that it's maybe not an increase, or it is an increase, or it's not an increase. You don't want to be running any of those agility gems, because you will get more damage from just using mastery gems, and you'll save yourself a little bit of gold. Consumables, the raid snacks. We're going to be looking at running Flask of the Seventh Demon, Potion of Prolonged Power, and Nightborn Delicacy Platter. You will not be using the raid food that gives the agility buff. You're actually going to be using your own personal mastery food because mastery gives more DPS than what agility does. Now, in terms of tier set, if you're going to be running with the Mantle and the Bracers Legendaries, you're going to be looking at tier 21 full set with no other tier 20 pieces equipped unless they are high item level and have good stats. If you are running boots and braces, then you're gonna want to run tier 21 4 set, and you do want to obtain the 2 set from Tomb of Sagaris, because it is indeed a DPS increase. Which brings us on to the legendary items. For best in slot, poison build, you are going to be running with mantle and braces. Mantle and Boots is only 0.4% behind, so if you do prefer that playstyle, then you are free to use that playstyle, or if you don't have Mantle, and you're working towards getting Mantle, then you can indeed, for now, run Mantle and Boots. Okay, so the bread and the butter, the talents, we're going to be looking at running Master Poisoner, Night Stalker, Vigor, Cheat Death, Thuggy, Toxic Blade and Venom Rush. This is for Mantle and Bracers. The relics that we're going to be trying to obtain are going to be Master Alchemist, Over Master Assassin, Over Balanced Blades, Over Toxic Blades, Over Gushing Wounds. 
Now, in terms of trinkets, the Assassination Rogue really doesn't have a lot of viable options in the new raid. We are going to be running with our Pantheon trinket in one slot. We cannot remove that. It is important that we use the Pantheon trinket. Now, partner with that, the only really good option we have is the Shadow Singed Fang. Apart from that, if you can get a really high item level Eye of Command, I think it's Upper Karazhan drops, or you get a high level Spectre, which drops from Colchadin, or you get a high level Convergence to Fates, which drops from Elisander and the Nighthold. So what is the single target priority? Well, what you want to be doing is keeping a max rupture on the target at all times, using max combo points, refreshing this when you have less than 7 seconds remaining to take advantage of the pandemic timer. You also want to be keeping Garou on the target 100% of the time, and then you want to be working on using Envenom. Envenom should be used at 4 plus combo points, and you want to try and keep as high an uptime as on Envenom as possible, using more abilities during your Envenom windows if you can do so. Mutilate is your primary combo point builder. Generating combo points. We're going to be generating combo points with Mutilate and we want to be building up to 4 plus combo points. We can fill that last combo point with Garot. Garot applies the bleed debuff but it also awards 1 combo point. This is also the same with Kingsbane. One of the benefits of Garot is because it's got a, a lower cooldown than what King's Bing does, before you go into your boss window if you need one combo point, it's a good idea to fill the last combo point with Garot. Not the fact that it's a good DPS increase, it's more that the fact that you can keep a higher end venom uptime during your boss window because you don't need to try and replace it or refill it during your boss. Now, the opener, the part that everybody likes to see, is actually not that special, to be honest. It does kind of break the rules of the way that the spec plays a little bit. But the opener we have for Mantle is going to be as follows. Garot, Mutilate, Rupture, Vendetta, Toxic Blade, Kingsbane, Vanish when our Mantle buff runs out, Envenom, Mutilate, and then try and work on maintaining our Envenom buff without letting our Garot or our Bleeds fall off. Okay, optimizing our offensive cooldown usage. Let's take a look at Vendetta. What Vendetta does is give us energy back and it marks the target with a debuff. So we want to be using this on a target that is going to stay alive for the full duration. And we also want to make sure we have less than 70% energy when we use this ability because we don't want to overcap any energy when we press it because we do get chunks of energy back whenever we press Envenom. So, press Envenom on cooldown when we have less than 70% energy. Next up, we're going to look at Kingsbane. We want to be using Kingsbane on cooldown. We want to be pairing it up with our Toxic Blade as much as possible, that we'll speak about in a minute, but you want to be using it on cooldown. Keep Envenom 100% uptime while Kingsbane is active. Now, one of the things with Kingsbane it is a ramping dot. Anytime that you apply Deadly Poison to the target when it is Kingsbane on it, Kingsbane dot ticks actually increase in damage. So, what you want to be doing is making sure, if you can't keep Envenom up at the start of Kingsbane, you definitely want to be keeping it up at the end, because the, whenever you use Envenom, you apply more poisons, you gain Surge of Toxin debuff, and yeah, you're generally stacking a lot of buffs onto the end of that Kingsbane when it's ticking really, really hard. Now, with that in mind, we're going to be looking at Toxic Blade. Toxic Blade, we want to be using, if we can, on the last 9 seconds of Kingsbane, because Toxic Blade buffs Kingsbane. So, whenever Kingsbane is dealing its most amount of damage, which is the last 9 seconds, that's when we want to be using Toxic Blade. But there's other rules that we need to look at when we're looking at Toxic Blade. You want to be using it on cooldown. You want to be getting as much uses as possible, because it's such a short cooldown. So, we have a general rule. Use on cooldown or wait 5 seconds maximum to pair with Kingsbane. So that's something that you really need to look at. One of the next things we're going to look at is Vanish. Vanish, if you're running with Mantle, you should use Vanish when it comes off cooldown and you should pair it with Envenom. You want to be trying to pair it up with cooldowns if you can. And if you're not running Mantle and you're running Boots, then you want to be using Vanish Rupture. 
That is generally the way that the the usage of Vanish comes out. Okay, the AoE for the Assassination Rogue. You want to be using Fana Knives as a combo point builder in two or more targets. If you can, you want to be keeping three ruptures on the highest HP targets or targets that need to die as soon as possible. You don't want to be throwing ruptures onto targets that's not going to live the full duration of the rupture because it will be a DPS decrease out over using just a flat out end venom. So you want to be keeping three ruptures up. No more, no less. Three ruptures as the magic number. You want to be using Garot on cooldown. And then you want to be using finer knives to build combo points. If you get four or more combo points, then you want to be using end venom. You want to be trying to go for those high amount of CP finishers for the higher chance to proc our bag of tricks and we'll keep the uptime on surge of toxins and end venom. And finally, thank you guys for watching the video. If you do like the video, please make sure and give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave your feedback down below. The Twitch link is down below, along with my social media links, and I just want to give a shout out to all the people at HeroDamage.com and the family of Ravenhold for the exceptional work that they've done over the past year. Now, if people's been asking for the Week Orders, the Week Orders are actually... It's a bonus reward for the Patreons, so if you want to get involved in that for as little as a dollar a month, then that's something you could do. Speak to me in my Discord and we will get that kind of stuff sorted out. If you want to keep up to date with Battle for Azeroth and everything going forwards, we are going to be making regular updates, so make sure to subscribe to the channel. This is the best content for rogues on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, share it with your friends. My name is Infectious, this is Infectious Gaming, and I'm out of here, guys.